Hey, what's up guys? Michael and Rob here at Lake Michigan Angler. In today's video, we're gonna walk you through your starting uh, rod setups for your small boat. You know, we found so many people over the last few years that are coming over into salmon fishing from, you know, bass fishing, walleye fishing, crappie fishing, just inland fishing overall. And there tends to be a common mistake they'll make a lot of times, which is they wanna get into this kind of fishing. They do some research online, but then they start to source their rods and reels from various places without really knowing the particular details of it all. And so they end up finding us and we end up getting them on the right path with the right rods, reels, line uh, to get them going out there. So the goal for today's video is to kind of educate you guys that are new to it, to coming into this, on what you're gonna wanna have. And the cool thing is we even put together like a starting, a starter pack of rods. So if you are looking to get into this kind of fishing, you can hit us up and get you the rods you need for a really great price all in. Makes it easy for you to just get in there without having to deal with all the hard parts of it all because we know what you need. We'll get it to you and get out and go fishing right away. So with that being said, let's jump into it. Rob's gonna start breaking down the the what we call the starter pack these are like your four most essential rods yeah the the first four rods to get when you're just starting off you don't have any other rods we're going to start with two mono rods that are on convector 30 reels this is 20 pound mono they're a dual purpose rod for you early in the spring they're gonna be great on planer boards you can run your dodgers and flies for cohos you can run crankbaits you can even use them for walleye fishing if you want um they can just be used for anything kind of all purpose the next ones are going to be okuma convector reels spooled with a 50 pound braid and these are dipsy rods it's important they're probably the most important rods in the boat throughout the entire season they're versatile and they just catch a lot of fish especially in small boats so you want those dipsies because in the spring you just put them out 15 20 30 feet they're going to catch cohos as you get later on the water warms up and you need to get deeper and there's more kings around these Put them out 100, 150 feet, 200 feet even. Put some flashers and flies behind them, and you're going to be catching kings. They're just an easy, basic setup that will work on any boat. And the great thing about the setup, too, is that as you get further into your fishing and you expand your selection, they don't go to waste. They, you, you're able to take exactly. these and reposition them because now that dipsy rod is going to be either your low dipsy or your high dipsy, depending on what you want to do there, which we're going to talk about more here in a second. Um, but, but Rob, you know, what about riggers? Because in this setup here, there is no yeah. rod for riggers. So, so yeah, that. you can use that mono rod as a planer border rod, but it'll also be a downrigger rod. So as things warm up, if you have downriggers on your boat, they'll work for that. If you don't have downriggers on your boat, they'll, you can add big weights to them, torpedo divers, other snap weights to get down deep. So it's a very versatile setup that'll work for everyone. Yeah. And it, because a lot of folks that are coming in from you know, the inland fishing world, they're, they're not really equipped with downriggers out of the gate, exactly. most folks. And so having the dipsies is gonna yep. be that for you and get you down into those depths mm -hmm. and really, really be productive. And then the kind of rods that we got these These are uh, Akuma Classic Pro GLT rods and throughout the whole video, basically that's what we're putting on all the, the setups yeah. here. Yeah, and it's a great all-purpose, time-tested. Yeah. We've outfitted this rod with thousands Great value of rod, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the cool thing we should mention, too, and I think people need to be mindful of, is that for our kind of fishing, we're trolling. The rod, in a lot of times, the least important part of the of the whole setup. It's the reel in the line. Exactly. That you're going to put the more of your value into. you. Uh, the rods are just kind of there, you yep. know, holding everything together. Um, so that's why, you know, we recommend these rods. Great value for them. Mm -hmm. um, so now that you've got your starter pack, let's talk, or maybe you are someone that's kind of already in the starting world and you're looking to expand in that into more uh options and all that stuff let's talk about what we have for our lead core and yeah lead core is so another great lead line. core catches a lot of fish it's yeah. pretty easy to use you know there we have different lengths of lead core on each rod you'll hear people talk about a three color and a five color and a seven color and basically for each color of line you know it's it's 10 yards and for that 10 yards of line it's going to go down four to five feet and so that's why we have different lengths. And so we start off like an early season, you know, when there's, you're still fishing fairly high in the water column or in tight, uh, a three color and a five color. So you're gonna be getting down 12 to 15 feet on that three color and 20, 25, 30 feet on that five color. It's a good early season. And that five color really catches a lot of fish throughout yeah, the year. Throughout the year. Exactly. Yeah. And the other thing about the three color is if you are running riggers, later in the season when it might be too shallow, 
a three color might be too shallow, you can put it on your downrigger as a SWR rig. So they fill a few different roles there. They catch a lot of fish. Again, these are spooled up on Akuma convector reels. They're just going to be a little bit bigger. Um, and they're on GLT Class Pro uh, copper lead core rods. Right. Then as it gets later in the season, we have another package, like a middle, late season package of, of lead cores, which can be your seven color and your and your 10 color. So again, they get down about five feet per color. So you're gonna be 35 feet down and roughly 50 feet down on the 10 color. Um, just basic setups that will keep you on the fish the entire season. Yeah, and so we will offer that as like a, 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 a spring and then like a summer lead core setups. You get your three and your five for your spring, which is good to go. And then for those of you that wanna go into summertime and have some more lead cores for your summertime, where you're fishing a little bit deeper in the water column, your seven and your ten is another great two color options mm -hmm. that, you know, um, especially when the thermocline's a little lower, but seven and ten can really keep those fish in check, you know, yep. that are in the uh, out of temp feeding in that warmer water and stuff. So it's always good to have it up there. And uh, steelhead, man, seven colors and steelhead, something yeah. about that seven color with steelhead does really, really well. Moving further and in deeper into the rabbit hole of salmon fishing, you have copper uh, rods, and copper has become a staple kind of uh, program for anglers here on Lake Michigan, the Great Lakes. Um, so Rob, talk a little bit about copper and why why it's so productive and then what kind of a combo do we have for that? Yeah, so copper is similar to lead core. We fish it the same way. Uh, it gets down a little bit deeper per the same amount of line. So you figure, you know, for that 10 yards of lead core, you're getting down five feet. The copper is gonna be more like seven feet, sometimes eight feet. Um, but you run it the same way. You let all the copper out, you put your planer board onto the backing, and you let it out as far as you want. Um, so the basic setup there, like the most popular lengths of copper are 200, 300, and 400. That's all you really need to fish the whole entire season. Um, anything beyond that's really splitting hairs. So if you're just getting started, just worry about a 200, 300, 400. It catches a lot of fish. It's a different action than lead core as well. So not only are you getting a little deeper for the same amount of line, but it doesn't swing back and forth as much as lead core does. It's kind of a stiffer action, and it has just a little bit different vibration in the water that really catches a lot of fish. In fact, we've been catching a lot of our kings the last couple of years on copper. Yeah, and I, and I think that too it gives you that distance, depth, um, especially when those fish are a little more skittish and all Absolutely. that stuff. It's more of a... Like stealthy, it's definitely it's more stealthy. stealthy. Yeah. It's it's not quite as stealthy as a lead core, but it's much more stealthy than your downriggers and all the other stuff that's closer to the boat. Yeah, that, that's hauling through the water. Yeah, um, and then with that, what's the combo we have paired up for? So that? yeah, we have the two hundred to three hundred and the four hundred. They're all spooled up on convector reels, Okuma convector reels with the Okuma Classic Pro GLT lead core copper rod. Uh, the two hundred is on a forty-five size reel, and the three hundred and four hundred are on fifty-five size reels. Yeah, and so that out of the gate, we have it all spooled up, ready to go for you. Now, let's talk about one of the, the final, and I think this is where you get to like your more advanced anglers when you start dealing with wire lines. Yep. And uh, what, what's great about wire? Why is it so productive? How are people going to be using their wire rods? Wire diver rods are my favorite rods in the boat. They, I'd say the last couple of years, they've been catching the most kings for us on the most consistent basis. Uh, a lot of people think they get down deeper than braid. They do get a little bit deeper than braid, but the main thing that makes the wire so effective is that it has its own signature in the water, its own harmonics, its own vibration that just seems to piss off fish, especially king salmon. So they're my favorite rods for that reason. They're also a fun rod to catch the fish on because yeah. with wire you feel everything. You know, yeah. it's there's no stretch, there's no give. Yeah. So it's it's a lot of fun. It's super effective. And it's just a great overall rod and reel to have, um, especially if you already have your braids and yeah. you have everything else. The next step is definitely yeah. the This is the, the final piece to that puzzle yeah. because uh, wire can be tricky to deal with. You know, there's definitely, maybe there's something we'll talk about in this future video, how to handle the wire because one mistake with it, if you open up that drag, you're not paying attention, that wire binds on itself. It's done. Just come back and see us. We'll have to respool it all. Yeah, you know the main key with letting out wire is just letting it out slow, mm -hmm. and and then you're fine. But that's it's the main thing is just you know being patient with it, and you're in good shape. And don't try to horse the fish in on it. Yeah. But you will catch a lot of fish with wire divers. Yeah. 
And I think the other thing to mention too, because you're dealing with this line specifically, if, if there's going to be any kind of area where you're going to want to invest in more than anything, it's going to be on your wire reel. Absolutely. You want the good drag because that wire has zero stretch and it is unforgiving to make one mistake. Let's say you're fishing on a day where there's a lot of wave action going on there. You're bouncing around. The drag is too tight. You got a big king on the other, other line and you hit a wave and you're going up and down. You could pop something really quick because it's, it's, it's really unforgiving. Um, so having a good reel with good drag, uh, I think that's the area where you're going to want to make a good investment in on that. So let's talk about the combo that we put together for that wire setup. Before. Yeah, so right here, this is a uh, Okuma convector reel again, the 30 size with a line counter. You always use the line counters on your dipsies, whether it's wire or braid. And it's it's teamed up here with a uh, uh, Okuma white diamond wire rod. So it's a great value setup. It's a good quality rod and reel. It's spooled up with uh, seven strand blood run wire which is great wire, mm -hmm. um, and it's just ready to fish. We have terminated with a big 90-pound snap swivel on the end of it and the bead, and uh, you're ready to go. You're going to catch a lot of fish with this rig. Yeah, it's very, very effective. Run it as your uh, low diver, your deep diver, your mag divers in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Very, very productive, and uh, does, it's a lot of fun. And, and Rob's right. I mean, the rods tend to be, tend to be more noodly uh, for your wire divers because you yep. want that flex. Because again, you have zero stretch in that in the wire, um, and uh, so it tends to be able, you feel a lot more for yeah, sure. Ex exactly, so, the wire doesn't let. And I think a common uh, misconception people have with salmon rods in general is that they're going to be really heavy. Yeah. But they're really not for the most part. They're, 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 most of them have a lot of whip because you need to be able to absorb the shock of that fish. Yeah, the shock of the fish when it's pumping in the water with the waves yep. and the current. You need those rods to be a little bit more. Most of these rods tend to be like medium action. For yeah, the most medium part. action. Yeah, like, you know, we've had folks, and this is where it goes back into folks coming in there, and they'll say, "Hey, you know, can you check my setup that I got? I'm going to be using it." And we're happy to check people stuff out, give them advice on it. Like, yeah, this this will work, and we'll do that. We'll say, mm -hmm. "Yeah, you don't need to buy this. That that'll work for you." Other times, guys will come in with like musky rods, like stiff as a broom. Like, I'm going to use it for trolling. Like, that's not a downrigger rod, dude. Like, you're going to break something. Yeah. It's going to be a mess. Um, and so the goal here was to kind of just give you guys information, especially those of you that are newer or thinking about jumping into uh, salmon fishing. Now is an excellent time to get into it. We have a uh, very healthy uh, ecosystem in Lake Michigan right now with all the fish, the numbers of fish, bait populations up. Uh, they've uh, A lot of the mature fish coming in now are from the increased stockings uh, four years ago. So there's more fish around. Uh, it's a great opportunity to get out here and uh, uh, get on some fish and hopefully uh this video has helped you kind of guide you in the right direction of course you can always come into the shop if you're in the area or reach out to us uh via website or our social media which are linked down below you can also call as well if you have questions insight and if you're interested in any of these starter packs here we'll have that on our website which will be linked down below for you to check out get anything you need out of these various packages for a one set price all in you get the rods spooled up, ready to be fished as soon as you pick them up from us or we ship them to you, whichever happens, right? Yep. So thank you guys for watching. Wish you all the best out there. Tight lines. We'll talk to you guys soon.